This is a quick tutorial on how to work with uh, color inside of Geomagic Wrap, just some of the basics. Um, so here what I have is a PLY um, polygon that I dragged in and a PLY polygon. This one has what we call vertex color. So there's different kinds of color that are associated with, with polygons and with vertex color you see right here the vertices have a color and uh, that is how the polygon carries the color right so that's one main type of uh, color there's another one called object color where each shell has one complete RGB value to it which hardly anybody uses but it's still there and then there's another one called texture color and that one is what a lot of the multimedia companies use OBJ the file type is utilizing that primarily and you know like Maya blender things like that softwares like that um, utilize texture color which you're essentially just mapping taking a picture and wrapping it around the outside of the polygon now this one is the most flexible the texture color because you can have a high resolution picture on a polygon that might be low resolution uh, vertex color if I decimate the polygons the color gets decimated so we'll just kind of demonstrate that uh, real quick so you can kind of see just to prove out how that works so if I turn off the edges this works great because it has a instructions panel here that has some some color on it that shows the detail that's there and if I come over and I say I want to decimate this object just down to like one tenth of what it was we'll go ahead and hit apply so now what it's going to do is decimate it down to one tenth so now look at what we have here we decimated it down to 500,000 triangles and it washes out all the color all that detail because the color is on the points and the lower you res the lower you go with the resolution, the more it decimates the color too. So that's where the texture color comes in. So if I cancel this out, it'll just take a second. So there we are, we're back to where we started. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this object so we can keep that other one as is. What we can do here is we can take this object and come over to tools and we can say generate texture so our software has a tool where you can create a texture map from a vertex colored object so not every software has a functionality like that I've come to find out that there are people that use this software for that main purpose like there are some people that that is one of the main purposes they got this is to be able to take those vertex colors and convert them over to texture maps so you can dictate all of this stuff has to do with how it converts it and our software kind of does it with an automatic uh settings you can actually have it have more than one texture panel like these are how many different jpegs or or raster images that it's going to use and then this is the resolution so it's, this is going to do the 4096 now if I hit apply it'll just take it a second to calculate and what it's going to do is it separates the color from the polygon into a texture map of an image and the polygon into a separate object so now nothing really changed on the screen. Uh, you may notice that the lighting does change just ever so slightly when you look between the two different objects. So if I hit F2, you see how this one is a little bit brighter and then this one's a touch darker. It has something to do with the way it renders the colors. But now if you come over here, you'll see that some of these other tools are highlighted now. And if you come over to manage texture, Look at what it did. It went ahead and it took the object and broke it up into all these different panels and all the pixel colors and made this giant texture map, almost like a 
a weird deformed version of a world map. It takes all the pieces and lays them out on one giant raster image. And then it remembers all the locations and everything where to wrap it. Just to kind of show that you can turn on these boundaries and I'll hide the, the color and actually hide the other object too. And then let's turn off vertex color too. So this is how it chose to break it up. It just went around and broke it into different panels. And then, so this is a, this is kind of like one image. That's another image, and then it lays it back on the surface there, right? So we come back over to the dialog. You can kind of turn on and off those boundaries. They even give you, like, this chessboard thing, so you can, like, visualize how... how it's overlaid. So you can see if it would wrinkle. The chessboard is to help you see the quality that it, that the overlay is. Now this is useful for people that are going to do other things with that. So now we have this texture map. Now they're kind of divorced from each other as far as the color and the resolution of the uh, polygon. So if I come over to polygons, I can come over and say, let's go ahead and decimate that again down to 500. And we'll let that calculate. And you'll see that the color doesn't really change. So now you see that down here it says current triangles, just under half a million. And look at now, the color is no different. So. Uh, just to show how much the triangles are decimated, you can come in and turn off the custom texture and see that it is way lower than before. You can see how, how much bigger those triangles are. So if you come over here and show this, and let's turn its vertex color off and turn the edges on. So there's the one object. And here is the other object. See how big those triangles are there? Where's those? So that is just demonstrating it, um, how you can create um, a texture map from ver the vertex color. Now, one other thing that I'll show here at the end that's really neat too, is there are times where somebody has a scan of an object without color. So if I want to remove all color from this object, I can come over to Tools. I can say Remove Texture Color, Remove Vertex Color, just in case, so it has no color associated with it. And you can you can see Turn On. Standard color is just putting an overlay on it. So you'll see that there's no vertex. So there we go. We have an object with no color. You can actually, so I've had an instance, right, where you have a scan of an object where one of the scans, the color looks great, but the scan doesn't look wet, that good. And then another object where I have a higher resolution scan, a better scan of the object, but no color you can actually come in and you can say generate color and you can select what object you want to pull the color from so i can say go ahead this object has no color let's steal the color from that one and apply it to this object so you can essentially copy color from one object to another they don't have to be the same exact object but if you do it it gets really scrambly it looks horrible if you don't have a very close uh, object. Um, it's made to be the same object, obviously. Um, so you can actually take the color from another scan and apply it to your object, which is really handy. So now you'll see that we have the 500,000 triangle object with texture color on it. And you can definitely see that by coming in and turning this on and off. And then if I wanted to write this out as a neutral file to give it to somebody, I would go ahead and say save, and I'd write it out as an OBJ. That's the, the most popular method 
that will take a that will take a uh, texture map, right? So if I come over here and I say OBJ, um, WRL might support it. I cannot remember. It's hard to keep track of like every single one of these what they support. I'm pretty sure WRL supports it um, as well, which is the web-based polygon format, and then save it as an OBJ to give to somebody else. All right, so that is the tutorial on wrap and how it handles vertex color and texture color.